what is going on youtubers and welcome to another episode here on esgn net of esgn net presents the sports gamers soapbox talk podcast this is episode 19 and what a show we have this week got a lot of things to uh, talk about here uh, as you know college football is now officially in full swing matter of fact there's a l- quite a few games that have been going on today um, and uh, we'll actually talk about one of the games that I kind of watched last night. It was uh, Stanford and I believe K State. Uh, one of the big names this year uh, for the Heisman Trophy is for uh, a Stanford Cardinal, uh, Christian McCaffrey. He's one of the front runners for the Heisman um, for the Heisman uh, Trophy this year. We'll talk about that. Also, we'll take a look at some of the some uh, high-profile games uh, coming up uh, to later today. Uh, you got uh, Texas and Notre Dame. Uh, you got LSU in uh, Wisconsin to facing, uh, or actually facing Wisconsin. Uh, they're at Lambeau Field, and you got the big game of the night, number twenty, uh, USC versus number one Alabama. Uh, so we'll get in a little bit of that. We'll get a little college talk, talk a little bit of college today. Um, also some local, well, I'm not going to get into local stuff, but a lot of local sports teams now as I think about it. Uh, f- high school and, and college started their uh, uh, football season uh, on Thursday night or on uh, last night. Uh, so also uh, some NFL news. Madden 17, yeah, it's it's back, yeah. Mr. Madden, he's, he's back with his game. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, Madden 17 officially out this past week, and of course fans flocking to it, and we'll get into some of that. Also, we'll get into some uh, news here on the channel, uh, give you a little bit of a channel update here in just a bit about some uh, new s- uh, franchises, uh, career modes, and also uh, what you guys should be expecting here in the next couple of days and towards the uh, rest of the uh, really rest of the uh, remainder of this year uh, here on the channel uh, with the sprinkle in some other stuff that we're going to try to work on here uh, over the course of the uh, next couple of months and whatnot. Um, also, NFL continue in the NFL. We got news on the big Kaepernick story that it's just I don't know. It's just to me. It's just. People are just getting over overreacting on so much stuff, and that's the thing about social media nowadays, is you put something out there, or, you, or people will talk about it, and it just it just creates a whirlwind. And people on Twitter, I mean, oh my good, I never seen so many pe- horrible people in this country that say the most horrible and rude things about individuals. And then get, you know, have all these facts and then turn around. They don't fact check themselves and the facts are wrong. Especially like uh, the guy by the name of Rodney Harrison. Yeah, former NFL star. He's an idiot and proves why I don't trust some reporters. Especially a a former NFL player turned now analyst. Um, He is such an idiot. And I'm I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to give him our first ever Idiot of the Week award. I'll talk about that. And also, uh, we'll talk about uh, Tim Tebow. Now he is now, of course, you know, there's still talks about him being in the NFL. Uh, there's a couple teams that are actually, uh, there's actually been some names that he's been linked to some NFL teams. But he could be possibly leaving to a, or moving from one major league sport to another. We'll talk about that. Also, Del Rio in trouble with the WWE again. Yes, yeah. Del Rio uh, in the news once again this week. And also his uh, girlfriend. She's also in the news. Um, And this is kind of... uh, This is kind of... This is, to me, I think is kind of just stepping over the the line there. With, uh, really, with corporations and and just in general. Just jobs in general out there. Um... We'll talk about Paige and Dale Real's future uh, and their maybe possible future endeavors. Yeah. We'll get into that, all that, and more here on today's show. Also, we have a little bit of some NBA news. As you know, uh, the passing of D-Way, uh, his um, cousin passed away. 
in Chicago, and this has kind of made some um, some big news, uh, especially in the realm of pol- politics and dumbass politicians making statements that um, saying things that are completely false and untrue, and just saying, "Oh, well, if, you know, if you will, if you elect me, this wouldn't happen." Okay, you could say that, but. Chances are it's going to happen. So we'll get into that here in just a bit. Uh, So let's first start off with some, uh, I guess you could say some channel update news or some news here on the channel. Um, We're getting, uh, actually, to be quite honest with you, I almost didn't uh, get this show up today. Um, As I'm recording this, I'm actually recording this a couple hours earlier than I, uh, well, yeah, I always record it hours early before. Uh, before I actually put it up, but this episode was almost almost postponed, or actually it was going to be, um, I don't know, some ways um, a little shorter or whatever uh, than normal, uh, because I was actually, uh, if I had the money, and this is the thing, if I had the money, I would have went uh, to uh, ne- uh, to Lincoln this weekend to go see a Nebraska game with a buddy of mine. Um, if I didn't have the money, if I didn't have, if I had the money, oh, trust me, I would have went. Um, oh, and not to mention too, um, and then, like I said, this is gonna be up hours. Right now, this is uh, roughly nine thirty east, or excuse me, nine thirty Central Time. Um, so uh, when this gets p- uploaded, it'll be around six, I think, in the afternoon. Uh, so there's already been news about this and whatnot already on floating around on the internet. But uh, there, apparently there was an earthquake here about two hours ago uh, that the epicenter started in, in somewhere in Oklahoma, central Oklahoma. And I guess uh, I have friends that live in the Kansas City area and live in the metro area. Uh, of course, I have, you know, I live right across the river from St. Joseph, Missouri. Um, and I've seen a lot of people on Facebook say, hey, you know, you know, what was that or that was a, you know, that was a big quake or whatever. And I'm thinking, I'm like to myself, I got up, you know, roughly about two or three, two, about two and a half hours, three hours ago. And I'm kind of thinking, I'm like, I didn't feel anything. Like, what are you talking about? Apparently we had a 5.6 earthquake. Uh, that's what at least was been reported. And, uh, this is not the first time this has actually happened. Uh, I believe two years before I started this channel, we had a, a, a earthquake, and that one was about about the same, about a five four, five five, um, size earthquake. And that one I did, I, that one I I knew, you know, I, as soon as it happened, I knew I'm like that's this we're having an earthquake right now, uh, because I I seen things are rattling. And uh, one actually, I uh, had a picture that just fell off, completely off. And it was, you know, sitting flush on the table, uh, near, no, not near edges, and it just, you know, the vibration of the, you know, earth shaking, kind of just had it fall off, and it freaked me out. I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, what the hell just happened? And then you know, I looked, you know, online, and there it was, and officially there we there was an earthquake. Um. So yeah, it kind of you know that time it freaked me out. But this time, um, I didn't feel it at all, <laughs> and I was up the apparently to the time where a lot of people were reporting that there was an earthquake going on. I was up at the time, and I'm thinking I'm like, I didn't feel anything. Like <laughs> that is weird. So, um, but I'm sure there's more reports about that. I'm, I'm sure I, I probably need to be corrected or anything by the time this gets up uh, here on the channel, but. Um, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Uh, but going back to what I was trying to say, it was, uh, about the channel update here on the channel, here on ESGN net, uh, Madden franchise and I believe career modes, uh, I have been, uh, playing some gameplay, uh, working out some kinks of some sliders, um, and just you know, overall just trying to get the feel, the look and feel of the, ch- of the game. Uh, now, one of the series I have started, uh, I've started capturing, capturing some footage. I'm actually going to continue that here. Um, and that series probably will not start until uh, sometime next weekend. 
So probably maybe a week from today, maybe somewhere in that, in that following week or so. Um, as it is a three-day weekend, you know, so happy Labor Day out there to everyone that uh, laborers out there that are going to have a nice three-day weekend. Um, I'm going to try to work on that. If I can get those videos, um, you know, uh, captured, well, I've already got them captured, but if I can get them edited up and uh, voiced over, uh, they could be up as early as next week, uh, really, truly, uh, maybe even on Monday. I can actually have a couple of the first couple episodes up on the channel. I'm not too worried about the rosters and stuff like that uh, for that series, um, which I'm actually this year is going to be a defensive lineman. Um, it's actually a player that I re tried to recruit in a couple of call or back in a college game a couple of years ago. I think it was NCAA 12, and uh, the if I did YouTube back then, this probably been one of my longest running series because I've been I was been like. I don't know, 15 years into that game. I think I am. I think I'm like 15 or 16 years into that game. And uh, this kid, the four years that he played uh, for Wisconsin, I played as, uh, of course, Nebraska. That kid just was all over me. Uh, he would not let up. And uh, his name is Nick Barber. So look, uh, stay tuned for that. He's a defensive end. Um, and it should be a good series now. We'll finally bring him to Madden. Um, he's one of those characters that I, in the past, you know, I'm like, he's, you know, he's really interesting. Uh, because I actually moved him over to Madden and I uh, actually picked him up in Madden as my defensive end. Um, for one of my Madden teams there that, that uh, I think it was the Colts I was running with uh, that year in that Madden game that, that, that same year as the full game, college football game. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was a lot of fun. Uh, so far, it's been a lot of fun playing as him. Uh, well, st also too, uh, I, I like I said, I am going to bring back Pete Shiloh um, and have a series with him. Uh, as for our series, uh, when it comes to uh, franchise, franchise will be a secret. I will reveal that in a very special episode uh, of. Uh, it's actually called the inter or the. Uh, prelude um to uh the you know to the announcement um kind of just giving you guys a, a preview of what uh you we have in store for that franchise coming up so um as for pete shiloh i don't know what team yet i'm gonna i'm still looking to see what team is gonna be um he won't be on the cardinals this year i kind of want to have something different um and then, you know of course with a lot of my series i've started i've never really officially finished uh, I am trying to wrap up the Green Bay Packers franchise, but with that franchise, I've played so so much and so well uh, in it. That franchise will not necessarily be; uh, it'll be a continuation of the series. Uh, it may be, uh, it may be still. Well, I know from one actually, it'll still be an edited series, but maybe eventually will be some kind of maybe live commentary series, um, or occasionally we'll have an edited episode every so often um but yeah this year I, I really want to focus in on a lot of madden this year uh because i do want to start a madden franchise uh, of course i want to start you know have continuing this nick barber's uh um career mode uh pete shiloh uh and then also want, i like to do draft king or draft <laughs> draft kings yes draft champions i really like to start that and uh, start a series with that and maybe even include you guys uh, as a part of it as I can play against you guys and it'd be a fun series uh, to interact with you guys uh, out there in YouTube land so um, that is something I'm looking forward to uh, also too we're still uh, I've been playing a lot of NBA 2k uh, 16 uh, because as you know next week later next week uh, the prelude to NBA 17 is coming out um, so uh, I'm going to have videos on that, um, which won't probably come out until that following week. Because um, my work schedule is like hectic during the week. And that's the only time, really time I have to do any videos is just basically editing and getting things ready for the weekend. So basically my sat my Friday, uh, Fridays, Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday are already booked 
uh, because I'm doing voiceovers and all that kind of stuff. So that's what we have to look for. At least this weekend, I get, I'll have a lot more time to do um, a lot more videos. So next week, you could we could possibly see quite a few videos uh, being uh, produced and uh, put out there. Um, but yeah, we'll still have MLB the show. Uh, I kind of want to. I'm trying to fast track the uh, Royals franchise along with uh, some of the Road to Show players there. Eventually, we'll condense those down to maybe a, a, a you know a certain Road to Show player will pop up uh, every once in a while, and then uh, you know have a few episodes of whoever, and then we'll have you know the next Road to Show player come up and take over the channel for a while, um, and to, at least until after the baseball season. And then uh, we'll have um, we'll have I'll have uh, you know some a lot of like one you know we'll have one roadshow player show up and the rest will take, be on a hiatus for a while and then just kind of switch off from there on after uh, the month of October uh, you know after the month of September actually uh, going to October and then the Royals franchise I'm gonna try to wrap that up as quick as I can um, and that'll occasionally pop up on the channel here and there but. There will be a lot of Madden. There will be a lot more NBA um, coming up here uh, this year, uh, and for the remaining of the of the fall and going to the winter um, here on the channel. So that is something I like. I said I'm, I'm working on trying to get going, and so on and so forth. Not to mention I, I got um, my birthday trip that I always take on. Uh, this year I'm taking it actually in December, and we're I'm going actually. I've already decided I'm going to Pittsburgh for the Raw pay-per-view. I believe it is the uh, it's a December pay-per-view. I believe it's December 18th, and it's I believe it's Roadblock. So I'm going to that for sure. I have a couple friends I've talked to that uh, might be joining me on that on that little uh, adventure there uh, for that weekend. So um, I, I can't wait. I've, I'm already kind of planning that already out, and I'm actually going to. I've looked at tickets already for hockey, um, hockey game. Going to go see the Penguins play, so that should be really something. I would like to go see Pittsburgh play, uh, the Steelers, but they won't be in town. They'll be actually be in, in uh, Cincinnati that weekend, so, yeah, that sucks. But, uh, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, but that is it uh, for the channel update there. Just want to let you guys know what's going on. I also have an official video, a channel update video here uh, coming up here. Um, sometime maybe next week talk a little bit more about the channel all right let's go ahead and go and uh, let's get to the diamond here of course major league baseball is in full swing right now a lot of teams are calling up their um, September call-ups and well Atlanta Braves uh, look like they're going to be uh, could possibly have a uh, big name come up in their uh, <laughs> in their roster no it's not Dam damsey swanson uh it could possibly be um could be tim tebow yeah according to some uh sources one of the big uh, one of the big people of course always uh following news is espn and espn rep uh, reporters say that uh, there's a good chance uh that actually atlanta has a a genuine um, interest into having Tim Tebow uh, part of their roster, uh, not this season, but possibly uh, having him a, have a, a couple. Of, actually, he's been in a couple of tryouts, but um, you know, if uh, he does well with some of these tryouts and whatnot, um, he could be a part of uh, be invited to spring training next season uh, on the team. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I kind of find that interesting. I mean, I will say Tim Tebow is a very you know he is an athletic guy. Uh, great looking guy, whatnot. You know, of course, people like give him a lot of hat. You know, hack about being an NFL quarterback. Do I believe he's an NFL quarterback? And I've said in the past, and a lot of you know, not, not on this show, but also on the videos and stuff I, I have here on the channel. Um, and of course, especially if you know me personally, you know how I feel about him and whatnot. And do I think he's an NFL quarterback? He could be. I wouldn't say a starter. I would say he's more of a Backup, um, he could play uh, you know multiple positions like uh, you know tight end, um, maybe a fullback, but I don't see him as a starting quarterback. Now, 
don't get me wrong, then we're not going to get into too much debate about this. But, you know, he did have some re- some pretty good games there in the playoffs against uh, the Patriots a couple years ago and when he was with the um, Denver Broncos and whatnot. Um, but, yeah, I don't, I, you know, him playing baseball, I, that would be something. I, I, I could see him doing something like that. Um, you know, and... Not to say that Atlanta needs help or anything, anything like that, or any star power, because I mean they have Matt Kemp now, um, who's I mean, and and, and not just Matt, before even Matt Kemp got down there. I mean they've had you know Teron down there. They had uh, they have uh, uh, Freddie Freeman. I mean they have a good they have a good young pitching staff down there. They got some good young talent coming through their um, farm league system and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, Tim Tebow. I mean, going to to Major League Baseball that 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 kind of speaks my interest here. I mean, like I said, he's a very athletic guy, um, and I can see him, you know, doing that. Now, what position? I don't know. I would I would say possibly being an outfielder because um, he does have some pretty good speed. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the in the in the uh, comment section. And let me know what, what you guys think about this whole Tim Tebow, um, you know, possibly going to Major League Baseball and, and playing for a team. Uh, what position do you guys think he'll play? Be able to play? I think he'd be an excellent outfielder. I mean, he has, he's tall. He's got he's got good speed on him. Um, you know, I haven't I haven't seen any footage of him swinging the bat or anything. Um, but like I said, he's he seems like a pretty athletic uh, guy, and he could. Possibly, maybe it'd be a, a good impact uh, player for you know for you know, really any NFL or any uh, major league baseball team. So, and would I like to see him back in the NFL? Yeah, I would definitely like to see him back in the NFL. Uh, but I think his heart's really set on being a uh, NFL quarterback. So, uh, but yeah, we'll have to see how that all uh, figures out here for him uh, here coming up. Uh, maybe next season we'll see him uh, in a. Uh, Major League Baseball uniform. Uh, now let's go ahead and uh, let's get into some really sad news here. And this really kind of just ticked me off um, about um, what's going on right now here in the world. Especially we've had so many issues with gun violence. Uh, and that being said, uh, over the last weekend, uh, it, it was uh, said that um, NBA... Superstar uh, Dwayne Wade uh, lost a family member. He actually lost his cousin. Uh, she's a mother of four, and she was shot and killed in Chicago. Um, and people, are, you know, the police, of course, asking people to, if they seen anything, uh, heard anything, come forward uh, so they can solve this case. And um, especially, you know, D. Wade, he's actually, you know, came out and said that he would. Um, you know, give, um, you know, a reward for any kind of information that can lead to the arrest of the individual that killed his cousin. Um, he, you know, he's been in the news, you know, and for good things because he's recently just, he officially signed with the Bulls, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, about a, yeah, about a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so he's now a part of the Bulls organization back home there in Chicago where he's originally from. And, you know, this gun violence in period, just in, in general, and regardless who the person is, I don't care if they're famous or if they're, you know, just the everyday Joe. It, to me, it just really makes me sad and upset that um, this goes on. And especially to, especially to a woman that she's a single mother, she's a mother of four kids. These four kids have now lost someone that is, you know, they're everything. They, I mean, I don't know how old these ki- kids are. I'm sure they're young. They're, you know, minors. They're, and they can't really do, they won't be able to support themselves. And seeing this happening, you know, this happening way too much um, really gets to me. And, I, and I, like I said, everyone from here, from ESGNet and myself, um, our thoughts and prayers go out to the family. And we hope that someone has some kind of information about what's going on with uh, this case, and they can get it solved. Um, but to me, the what really 
upsets me the most is that uh, people uh, in the political realm, people like our, you know, the Republican National um, <laughs> Republican National Committee or, or whatever nominee of uh, for the President of the United States, Donald Trump is you know saying making these accusations and saying that if he's president this would never happen okay i hate to tell you this ass but it's going to continue happening i think it's going to even happen even more when you're president <laughs> of this damn country um you know you you don't have i i appreciate people that don't have a filter and they speak their mind but at the same time, when you speak your mind and you just say things, and especially have no facts to support it, and you can't um, you can't play devil's you know you don't play a devil's advocate, seeing both sides of the of the of the spectrum, and you know showing people that you know you're you're not one sided on issues and stuff like that, which he is te you know he is dead set on you know saying you know one thing and mean another which not you know i mean i don't want to try to make this too political but you know he went to mexico this past week and said all this stuff to the mexican people and then turn around and come kind of, and it wasn't even 24 hours it wasn't even a whole day of earth's rotation less than an earth's rotation less than 24 hours he goes comes back to the united states and says just says the most you're just the rudest things you could possibly think of about the Mexican heritage and people are like yeah I, I agree blah 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 it's like are you purposely just trying to get us you know hated I mean we're already hated by most people in this damn most countries in this damn world but are you trying to really alienate people in our own hemisphere you know can you know both Canada and Mexico it's like you fucking dumbass. What the fuck are you thinking? And part of my French. If you, you know, if, again, you don't like what I say, you can always, ch you know, go to another video. But I'm just thinking to myself, I'm like, you're an idiot. Like, why are you saying saying this? And when he made that comment about, you know, the, you know, showing his condolences to the Wade family and whatnot, um, or the loss of, you know, of. Um, the Wayne Way's uh, cousin, it just really made me, I'm like, okay, you, you can't say that this is not going to happen on your watch when you're president, because it is. There's been a huge spike of gun violence for the last, I, I want to I wanna say, me personally, I, I, it's happened ever since um, um, Columbine, and that was in the mid-90s. I remember I was in uh, what I think I believe I was in junior high when that when Columbine happened. It was ninety yeah it was, I think it was ninety eight ninety nine. So I was in junior high when that happened, or getting ready to go out junior high going to high school. It's ridiculous. I just I don't get it, and just shooting people just 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 for random or just for fun if you want to call it that. It, to me it's ridiculous. There's no point. And I don't want to see no one lose their lives for, I don't want to see people lose their lives for any reason. Um, but yeah, I, like I said, it, it just, it, it's really sad that, you know, people like Trump use this to, I mean, it's a scare tactic. I mean, it's a it's straight out scare tactic. It's a, it's a, the oldest tactic you can have in a political, you know, when you run for for a public office, I mean, you just try and scare people to the point where that they, they feel like that you're the only you know. Well, he said this, he's gonna do this. Well, I'm gonna vote for him. That's not the right reason to vote for someone. You know, don't give your vote up just because they're using. I mean, that right there should be a halt sign right there. He especially if there's no fact to it. You know, I'm sorry, but I'm all about the facts as as. Uh, Joe Friday would say from Dragnet, and yes, I'm yeah. I know what Dragnet. I know if you don't know what Dragnet is, then you don't. You've never watched 
old school television shows uh, that used to be on Nick at Night back in the day. So for those millennials out there, uh, look that up. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's just it's 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 crazy. It's I don't understand it, and um, and again, I just hope that they can find whoever did this um, to uh, D Wade and his family, and they can put these this individual to justice. So. All right, now let's talk about the. Uh, uh, well, let's go ahead and move on to Madden, uh, or I should say Madden. Let's go move on. We talked about Madden earlier. Now we're going to talk about Madden itself. Madden 17 came out uh, as we move on to the NFL, and um, it's probably right now. I think it's probably one of the most like huge. I mean, every year when anytime this Madden comes out, it's always huge on YouTube. Uh, you have people use doing YouTube, ch- you know, their channels, uh, focusing on nothing but you, you know, on Madden. There's guys out there, and I know, and I, I can't think of the top of my head of all the YouTubers out there because there's quite a few, especially in gaming, that do a lot of uh, Madden videos. But um, th- I mean, there's so many Madden videos right now. People are putting out there, um, showing um, what. Um, you know, showing off the you know gameplay and, and, and you know and whatnot. Now, that, there have been bugs. There's some bugs in the in the gameplay and whatnot, and they've been fixing those and uh, patching those stuff up. Um, I usually wait until after the or going into the first week of the season um, to really official start my official Madden uh, franchise, um, and that's why I like this year. I was kind of behind because waiting on the you know official rosters and then turn around you know trying to get <laughs> uh, trying to get the series started you know I got work and all, you know all the and then you got so many other things you got family things going on and so many things going on that I really couldn't get the series started the way I wanted to hopefully this year that won't be the case um, but uh, you know, I think this is like this is almost all coming coming a national pastime here for Madden because you know you have midnight uh, releases of it. Uh, people do you know twenty four hour live streams. Um, so I and I think this is really cool. Uh, this year Madden they've added some new features in there, and one of the features I think I love so much, and this is something that people have been talking about for years, and that is the practice squad having a you know a you know. I think it's eight or ten men on your practice squad, guys. You can uh, that you can sign to your team, but only as a practice squad member, uh, and and you you know tra- you know work those guys out, train them, um, get them up to a point where it, let's say you have a major injury, or if you have a guy on there that starts to um, you know starts digressing pretty quickly, and you have another guy that's younger and he's you know. You've worked on it, work, work with them, and everything like that. You can bring them over and um, from move from the practice squad to the actual roster. Uh, the other thing they brought back, which I was so glad they brought back, because uh, it was something I needed last year with the Packers franchise, with the moves I was trying to make with a lot of different players and stuff, and that is uh, the uh, the uh, play um, substitution, um, you know, play formation substitutions, where you can. Put sub guys in there in certain uh, packet, you know, certain uh, defensive or offensive packages, um, and you know, you you know, if you have a you know, there's a guy that's better at playing a nickel, you have him in that, or in the dime package or whatever. You can now change that here in the game this year. Uh, they add some new things in the franchise mode itself, like the owners mode, uh, players mode, also too. They've added some new stuff there. So they've added some new stuff. One of the biggest things, I, and I think I agree this with so many uh, YouTubers out there, uh, and I, two of them, I, I know they've been, there's two YouTubers out there that have been talking about this the most. I believe it's uh, Mr. Hurricane and, I, and also Sports Gaming Universe, a.k.a. Nanas Fan. Uh, they both, and, and I, I want to say it's a couple others, have really acknowledged that they that EA needs to make this game, um, you know, you have a game come out every year, uh, be able to move your your franchise or your um, what do you call your um, oh uh, your your career player um, 
into every every the, to moving from one year to the next, just like they do in baseball. You know, having that roadshow character go from one. You know, you start them off in fourteen, and you move them to fifteen and sixteen, and of course next year you move them to seventeen. Um, that's something that I think Madden and uh, I think uh, EA Sports needs to work on that for next year, uh, because I think now it's becoming really unaccept- unacceptable for us to have to recreate a new character or recreate the character we created last the year before and start all over again. Um, you know, restarting careers and everything like that. And I know a lot of you YouTubers out there that they recreate that same character every year. There's been others saying, hey, I'm not going to recreate him. I'm going to wait a year or two and recreate him. Uh, so they'll, re- they'll create new characters. That's what I'm doing this year. Uh, I know I've created Matt Marvel twice now. I believe on Madden... Um, let's see, Madden uh, 16 last year, and then I believe on Madden 15 the year before. Um, so yeah, help you know doing that. Um, I think that would really help out, keep the fans interested, interested in their characters that they've created, and really creating a storyline where you can build on to stuff. You can focus on more of the. The creation side of the telling a story about a player from the very beginning, uh, starting his career off from, in one game, and then building up to, you know, the year game after, you know, um, the next game year after year after year. So, that's something I, I hope EA is going to be looking at too. Um, I know, uh, you know, I think really all sports games should be doing this, and the same thing with like, uh, I'm really surprised that NBA 2K um, series hasn't done that yet. Uh, that'd be something I think a lot of people will be looking forward to, uh, to see you know you know start their player and you know they would have started this last year. I mean you could I could continue on with uh, the the Troy Jenkins uh, series you know into, into this year's game. Um, so you know I, I am going to start with a new new player this year, um, and that's something we'll I'll talk about in my up, the actual update video about uh, that player and whatnot, but. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I I don't know, it's just uh, something I think Madden should do and whatnot. So, I know a lot of you guys probably got the, 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 uh, the game and and been enjoying it and that's awesome. I've been playing the game, like I said, I've been working on some sliders and just playing the game just in general. I think it's, you know, there's, they made some improvements, but, um, you know, there's always room for improvement. I think the biggest improvement is uh, having game saves from year to year. I think that's something that EA needs to work on and uh, really, you know, get to it because uh, that's something I think a lot of people are going to be start demanding, especially next year. Uh, you no know, more of this, you know, you know, because I, because I do, I get him because honestly, if I wasn't doing YouTube anymore, or if I wasn't doing YouTube like I am now, and I was going back to playing games like I used to. I would be, you know, 15, 16, you know, 15, almost 20 years into the game. I mean, that's how how often I played the game. Uh, but, you know, now doing YouTube and, and editing and, and cutting, you know, making videos and stuff like that, it kind of slows that down now because I was really hoping to get three years into uh, the Green Bay Packers franchise and, and now that not going to be the case now. So, and I mean, I, I mean, that's, uh, you know, with life, you know, things going on, you got life, you know, you got you know, work, you got family, you got friends you want to hang out with and, and spend time with and everything, and that affects your ability of uh, trying to get videos out, so. Um, but, with, yeah, like I said, uh, Madden 17, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I know I have, and uh, like I said, we'll have more stuff on the channel this year. Uh, I I'm, That's one thing I am really pushing for, try to get uh, this year, get a lot more Madden uh, this uh, for the fall and the winter uh, here on the channel. All right, now let's move on to my soapbox of the week topic this week. And yes, a lot of you probably already know what I'm going to be talking about here. <laughs> it is, <laughs> oh my god, I just I don't get people when it comes to this story. Okay, so the last two weeks now, last two weeks. Colin Kaepernick, now actually now three weeks now because he just did this past uh, this uh, past uh, what was it Thursday night I think he did it again against San Diego. 
uh, Colin Kaepernick, the quarterback, um, currently right now he is by the looks of on the depth chart he is still the he's the starting quarterback starting uh, quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers. Um, Colin Kaepernick's been in a little hot water. He's been in a lot of controversy here. People questioning his patriotism to to the United States. Uh, Kaepernick has been uh, said, or has been, and has has said that he is no longer going to be standing up during the national anthem, and the reason is because he thinks that uh, if he does this, uh, this is his stand on uh, Americans taking more um, responsibility and really better treatment of black people in general and um there's an article uh there there's a, a link down there below you guys can check it out as always um about his uh his protests and whatnot now this has been going on for a couple weeks now this uh, two actually yeah it's been going on for two weeks uh and the local media hasn't really said anything about this at all those first two weeks uh, as for the you know national media, it's been like a firestorm. I mean, of course, you got all your talking heads on Fox and and of course on uh, ESPN um, and also on Fox Sports. Um, so you know, people are like, okay, you know, he's being disrespectful. You know, he's you know he's ruining the, the you know the fabric of America. He's ruining it. Um, you know, he's ruined, he's, he's basically spitting in the face of all Americans that have sacrificed their lives for, you know, the right for him to play the, in the NFL and all this and that. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, no, he's not. He's doing exactly what his, what he, what those people are sacrificing themselves or do or fought for, which was to protest. You know, protests without being thrown into prison or thrown into jail, you know, whatever. Or being or being just killed on sight of doing it. That is the whole point of being an American. Is, is taking those rights that you, that we've all, that so many have sacrificed. And he's taking advantage of it. He's doing exactly what people, you know, other. I mean, it's no different than him than other people out there doing having marches over silly stuff. I mean, you have, you know, you have Black Lives Matter making marches. You have All Lives Matter making marches. Now you have a group now called All Blue Lives Matter taking having marches. You have, um, I mean, if you get down to it, I mean, to me, I consider them as a hate group. They're a homegrown terrorist organization. Domestic, uh, they're domestic terrorists. You got the Ku Klux Klan. They have <laughs> have public assemblies, public uh, protest. You know about you know we need to get rid of blacks and Jews and all that. And they do it, and no one's bats an eye at it. No one says anything about it. And to me, I'm like, this is no, and this is a peaceful protest. He never. Never ask anyone in the within the organization of that of the football team of the San Francisco 49ers football club. He never told anybody, "Hey, you need to join me. You need we need to take we all need to take us as a team take a stand." He's doing this by himself. Not to mention, there's been teammates saying, "Hey, I'll join you, dude. I'll help you out. I'm with you on this." And it's just not the black athletes. It is. Athletes of all shapes and colors that are, are joining him on this. Now, you got people <laughs> that totally disagree with him, which is f totally fine. Have nothing against that. That's the beauty of this country. We can disagree, you know. And you can disagree with people, you know, health, you know in a healthy way. Have, having a, a debate about things without being violent. You know, but of course you got some people out there that you know want to want to say some pretty nasty and violent things, like they have been on Twitter all week long. You got players like Aaron Boone or Anthony Boone or whatever the hell his name is, 
Uh, he's a player for the Minnesota Vikings. Has been coming out and saying some pretty outlandish things, saying that uh, it's total disrespect that he's doing uh, to the men and women of the armed forces, and that you know he's you know I'm, I'm thinking to myself, no, he's not. He's not being disrespectful to him at all. Then. Another thing that came up was, and I, and I I started thinking about this. I'm like, you know what? In a lot of ways, if you listen to the Spar- Star Spangled Banner, it is exactly what Kaepernick is doing. <laughs> the words in that. Remember, people, the Star Spangled Banner is a, a national anthem. By law, you don't have. You're not forced to sing it. You don't have to sing it. It's a social, it social as a group as members of this of the social group of us here in the United States, we all kind of unspokenly agree that you know when you hear the national anthem, it's kind of paying respect to the country, showing patriotism. You're not forced. You're not obligated by the law saying that to you know to um say the national anthem at all you don't have to you don't have to stand that's all by choice now will people look at you weird and and and, and like oh why are they doing why is he doing why are why is he or she doing this or blah 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 yeah it's gonna happen but you're not all you're not by law you don't have to do it and the star spangled banner said you know pretty much is a it's a it's a song about breaking free, breaking tradition. Not to mention, there was a really good. I have to see if I can. I have, I have it on my Facebook page. I'll try to put it on the um, Twitter and the um, uh, Facebook page for the for the channel here. Um, I'll try to put that. Uh, I'll try to find. Actually, I'll try to find the link to actually the article or the video about it. But. If you listen to, look at the lyrics of Star, the Star, Star Spangled Banner, they're pretty racist. I mean, remember, our country <laughs> was started because of, you know, social injustice, wanting change, st- believing in our, believing in right, pe- the, you know, the rights of people, people having rights, people doing what they want to do, and not being told by a governing body of individuals, oh, you can't do that. You're not allowed to do that. You have no, no, that, you know, that's not called, that's not, that's not your, you know, you, it's not your right. You can't do that. And it, he had, Kaepernick has the total rights of, of it to do this. Now, as for the NFL, has the NFL punished him not, have punished him about this? No, they haven't. And I don't think they are. Right now, NFL got too many other fires to, <laughs> to, to, you know, to deal with right now. They just recently just, uh, um, this past, last week I talked about it, and this past week uh, they just uh, said that they're no longer going to pursue the investigation of, of uh, Clay Matthews, uh, Julius Peppers, and uh, James Harrison, and they're, Al Jazeera uh, allegation. That's the story I was going to talk about uh, here today. Um, well, I might as well talk about it now. They're they've been they're not going to no, no longer perceive uh, these three individuals or any any other individuals are involved in it uh, in this interview or alleged happening that hap with dealing with uh, uh, with uh, steroids and whatnot. That Al Jazeera apparently um, you know said there was a story about them. Uh, being a part of a uh, what do you call a uh, sting operation or a conspiracy of using you know buying using steroids and uh, passing them off you know pass selling them within to each other there in the NFL. Uh, there's no evidence that shows that, and so now the NFL is dealing with that. Not to mention the NFL, you know, there's a lot of people thinking that you know Roger Goodell stepping over his bounds and that his power of commissionership should be taken away from him that um he shouldn't be the disciplinarian of the nfl okay right now honestly right now the players that you have in the nfl you need somebody to be the disciplinarian the owners are not gonna do it 
especially if it's a player that they make money off of. It's that's not going to happen. The owners are not going to take responsibility. No, there needs to be a third party in there, someone that has no hook, that has no hooks, no ties to players, to the owners and the players themselves, and to be the person that's in charge of discipline. And to me, that's what the commissioner should do. What other than that, what is the job of the commissioner? Well, I mean, honestly, what is the job of the commissioner? And you can't have people, these NFL stars, running wild and not have you know no consequences for their actions. It there needs there they have to have consequences to their actions. Now, going back to the Kaepernick thing, we're, and I'm about to get on of a. I almost got on a tangent about that, but that's another time for another video. But <laughs> the whole Kaepernick thing, people are like, "Oh, they're you know, I'm." They're questioning his his American patriotism, and to me, to me, he's doing the right thing. Honestly, I you know I I applaud <laughs> Kaepernick for doing this because honestly, what other way can a player have a platform to say something? Besides being a football player, remember, people, he is a full, him being a football player is 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 second to him being an actual person. He is a black athlete. He is a black man that lives in this country. Even though he is an athlete and a well-known athlete, he is still being persecuted because he is black. <laughs> so. This is going to be an issue for him. Now, if you if you remember a couple years ago, when he was coming into the NFL, people questioned, "Oh, you know, he he's you know he's a black guy, you know he's a black athlete, you know, um, you know he is he good enough to play quarterback? Can he understand the pressures of him being a quarterback?" And I'm thinking, I'm like. You know, to myself, I'm like when people say when these analysts say this, and they don't say necessarily black, but they say can you handle the pressure, blah blah blah. It, it almost sounds like it's like okay, is it you guys saying this because you know he made a couple bad passes, or is it because you know he's not the stereotypical you know black athlete? You know, he either to me the the to be a quarterback in the NFL you have to be white. Only white only white quarterbacks make great. Only white quarterbacks make good NFL quarterbacks. It's like, no. We've had so many guys that are black athletes who were quarterbacks in the NFL. You know, you got, I mean, I can think of, let's see. You got uh, Randall Cunningham, one of my one of my favorite. Warren Moon. I mean, there's a whole list of players. I can't, I, I can't think of this. Doug, um, ah, dang it. And there's anybody who's a former Redskin player. Great quarterback. And I'm thinking to myself, no. Why do everybody think that if you, you know, a white, you know, having a white quarterback on your team is is going to be, is, is it. That's up. That's all that can happen. And everybody else, you know, uh, you know, if you're black, you know, the only play, position that black people can play is either, you know, halfback um, a defensive lineman, a, uh, a linebacker, or a corner, or a safety. No, they're so yes. Traditionally, do they play those the positions? Yes, but you know why? Because uh, white owners have pigeonholed those positions, saying those are only black positions. We're only going to put black guys in those positions. You can't know. I'm sorry. There are people out there that can play quarterback. Cam Newton last year prove prove that a black guy can take a, a, a you know a, a a team to to the um, Super Bowl, and I'm saying this and I don't even like Cam Newton. <laughs> I mean, hell, you've heard videos or you I've talked about him being a dumbass and everything here on the channel, and he's a good quarterback, great quarterback. I don't care. To me, I don't care what color the, the damn guy is. Can he throw the ball? Can he make completions? And can he get a team to be a winning team? Regardless of his color, if he can't do that, there's the door. It's all about winning. It's remember, and you guys remember, this is a business. 
You guys don't treat it as a sport anymore. It's a business. So if you're not winning, regardless of your color, you're out the door. Here's your pink slip. See you later. Now going on to, you know, and trying to wrap up this, what I'm trying to get to is social media is such just, uh, oh. the, the shit that people are saying on social media, saying, saying all this stuff about Kaepernick, using the N word like it's, you know, they're, you know, it's like a, it's like there's, you know, the natural language using it as a, you know, noun, you know, a noun, a pronoun, a verb. An adjective, and it's like, you, why are you saying this? That, that to me, I, and I've, I've talked to us before about using that word and everything. It disgusts me. And when you say this about a pro athlete, you know, and then you want to sit there and have these jersey burning, burnings and all this stuff. It's like, why are you burning a fucking ninety dollar jersey that you bought? And then you'll be regretting it when he. And that's what I said. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I'm gonna. I, I'm gonna be the first person to say this right now. You guys are dumbasses. And I can't wait till this guy comes out of nowhere and has a fucking just a MVP type season. You know, with and the way he was playing, and especially in this Chip Kelly um, uh, playbook that he that he's gonna be running and everything. He, I, they're, they're, I mean, the 49ers could be something this year. And this right here, this whole controversy could be in here, him being harassed or anything, could be a light, it could be the accelerant to light his career and have an amazing year and go back to the Super Bowl. Because remember, he has been to the Super Bowl before. He knows what it takes to get there. You know, unfortunately, he lost, he had to lose to the, the uh, Ray Lewis and the uh, Ravens, but <laughs> he knows how to get there. He knows what it takes to be, a, you know, be a Super Bowl caliber team. And to be honest, I, I can't wait. I cannot wait until people have to eat what they say, you know. And they have no choice when he they see him on TV all the damn time, you know. And like, and you know, he you know, he's not doing this to you know, he's he's you know he said he's not doing this to, to disrespect people at all. If you if you're taking a disrespect, that's your on you. But he's doing this to be simple fact because of the treatment of how blacks are being portrayed, or being treated in this country. And to me, I don't think it's just blacks. I think it's just pe- people of color, just minorities in general. There have been too many shootings. Happened to young, especially young black, I mean, mainly young black, mostly black men. But there's been too many sh- police shootings here happening. And I, people are tired of it. Black people are becoming, black men are becoming a dangerous species. And yes, are we killing each other? Yes, but that's another video for another time. We can talk about that. And trust me, I got issues on that. On that type of situation also. And, and, and to me, it doesn't, it's, it's ridiculous. But I think I think what Kaepernick's doing I think is awesome. I think it's great. You know, and we're not truly an equal country until we are actually treating people with the ability to be equal. You know, people were getting all crazy and area upset about you know, you know, Adam and Steve getting married, and that's the analogy I'm using. You know, for two men getting married. Who cares? Let them get married. You know? If Ashley and and Eve want to get married, fine, whatever. Let them get married. Let them have the same rights and same, you know, same rights, same, you know, abilities and everything, just like a heterosexual couple does. There's nothing wrong with that. There's need, there needs to be a lot more love in this world than hate. Shit. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, you think about it. I mean, I don't care. I don't care because, for, to me personally, my personal opinion about marriage is, regardless of what type of marriage it is, straight, lesbian, you know, gay, 
I don't give a damn. I, I think marriage is a joke in the first place, man. That's just me. I, and I'm just because I'm just jaded. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't. I mean, regardless what kind it is, I think it's a joke. I mean, when our when people don't take marriage serious in any any type of any type of way, especially heterosexuals don't take marriage in a in a a sacred way that it should be. You know, and stepping out on their husbands or wives or whatever with another woman or another man. If you don't take it seriously, the why you know, why are you why are you making such a big deal about two other people? You know, two people are of the same sex getting married. Married, you know. I mean, I, it don't make any sense. You know, people nowadays don't take marriage seriously like it should be. You know, and I mean, like I said, that's another video for another time. But yeah, I, I just I don't know. It like I said with Kaepernick, I think uh, this will all pass by because you know something else, something it'll be something else will freak out you know America, mainstream America, and they'll get they'll get upset about it, and they'll have to make you know make a big issue about it and whatnot. And this will just be another thing that'll just get swept underneath the rug, and nobody will pay it to any 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 mind to it, and. You know, we'll completely forget about this. We'll have a we'll have a year in review talking about everything that happened in sports, and people are like, "Oh, that happened," <laughs> you know, like that happened. Oh, damn, that was back in August. Damn, I didn't know that happened. Like late August, early September. Oh man, I didn't, I, I forgot about all about that. Yeah. Well, let's continue on now as I'm getting rid, trying to get off my tangent on that one. Uh, let's move on to Kaepernick uh, and more news about Kaepernick. Rodney Harrison, former uh, defensive end for the Patriots and a couple other teams. <sighs> There's a link down below. According to Sporting News, he's made a, he has made a huge accusation saying that Kaepernick is not black. Kaepernick is not black. Black. <laughs> okay, when I seen this and I read, I read it and I seen a video or seen a you know video about this, a video package on this on the news and stuff. I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, what the fuck is Harrison smoking? Seriously, like, I mean, like, you know, legitimately, what the fuck are you smoking? He's not black. Now Harrison goes on to say that you know um, he you know he actually correct himself later on saying that he was he apologizes and wants to you know make be clear that he didn't uh, he he uh, misconstrued of what he was trying to say is he he forgot that he that Kaepernick was actually adopted by a, a white family and which is true he was adopted by a white family but um, his. He was given up for adoption. His mother, I believe, is black, and his father is white. Okay, it, I'll let you, I'll let all you you know people out there that don't know about you know the black culture or whatnot. A lot, I would I would say a lot, if not all, mixed people consider themselves black. It comes down to a lot of different different scenarios but for the most part if you look at fucking Kaepernick's hair how many white boys do you see running around here with black afros I haven't seen too many <laughs> he is black the individual who are, you know the individual that's mixed makes the decision of what color they are or what what color they identify themselves to Kaepernick, he identifies himself as black. Okay? Black. <laughs> he is black. Harrison, I can say some things about you. Especially the way how you talk. To me, you ain't black, brother. <laughs> I don't know. Today, I'm just really just... I don't know. I, well, maybe I haven't ate breakfast yet. But anyway... <laughs> again, I'm, I'm recording this hours early when it's actually up, so... I apologize. But Harrison is sitting there saying 
that Kaepernick is not black. And I'm like to myself, I'm like, dude, you're fucking, you're stupid. He's black. Let's not have an issue of like who's, how black do you have to be? You know, show your your true blackness of how black is black. It's like, shut the fuck up. He's black. He's African American. He he is well, you know, he's mixed race, but he can say, he identifies, and his background is being black. Now Kaepernick in the past has said he has been racially targeted before he you know he was in high school and in college. Uh, that you know he was treated unfairly because of the simple fact because he was black. Uh, people seen him as 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 you know, a man of color, and you know he was had occasionally he has been stopped by police uh, and whatnot, and you know harassed just like you know most uh, African American men have been by police or law enforcement or just person of authority of authority figure just harassing them, giving them a hard time. But yeah, I just I seriously want to give you know Rodney Harrison the first ever idiot of the week award. Seriously, you're fucking stupid. How in the hell are you gonna say that about especially about another black male saying he's not black? And you know damn well there's there is proof. There are, are uh, <sighs> there are videos. There are interviews about him talking about his his time growing up as a young black male. How are you going to sit there and say that, that, that is not that, you know, it's, it just, it really just made me have a headache. I, I just, <laughs> my, I just, I don't know. My head was just throbbing when I heard this, when I read this article, I'm just thinking, I'm like, how fucking stupid can you possibly be? I think now I've uh, the stupid factor is now overflowed. Now I mean, we're on the overflow of fucking you know, just being a total fucking idiot. And that is Mr. Harrison right there. So our first ever idiot of the week award goes to Rodney Harrison. Oh my god! And as a so-called reporter or an analyst, someone didn't do their fucking homework. <laughs> when they when you know when he said this, do your fucking homework before you start spewing out fucking shit. Oh my goodness, I I don't know if he now I don't know if he apolog- officially apologized to. Um, he has made a statement out in public, a, a public statement about he apologizes for what he said about Kaepernick, but I don't think he he apologized to Kaepernick because. I believe he made some comments at Kaepernick, I believe, on Twitter. Um, so I don't know if he's apologized for those comments yet, but um, but yeah, I, I just I cannot believe it. I just I, it's like man, this hurts my head. <laughs> it really does. It's like oh my goodness, man. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and go now to the other gridiron. That is the college gridiron, and we're going to uh, talk about really quick uh, last night. Stanford Cardinals hosted the uh, Kansas State Wildcats. Uh, Cardinals won 26-13. Christian McCaffrey uh, had a big game there. There's a link down below on the uh, how the game went and everything. I watched a little bit of this game. And uh, this this young guy, this uh, Christian McCaffrey, he is a um, – he's, he's got a good shot. He's one of, the, I think, three guys that have been named um, – or been or actually been talked about here this season for the Heisman Trophy, uh, the biggest award you can get in college football. And uh, like I said, there's a link down below uh, from Fox Sports. Uh, it was on I think FSN one last night. Um, K State uh, on the road there um, for fo- for you know start off their football team uh, their football season this year. Uh, had a you know it was a good game uh, there and of course Kansas State tried to stay in there as much as possible but it was just too much uh, McCaffrey just took over there and uh, just really did a number on them um, you know he had a he had a one uh, kick return there that he had and oh and then turn around it was a flag I'm like oh man that that was a good run like I feel bad for him you know <laughs> really, I feel really bad for him like oh damn he had a you know that was a Excellent run, probably one of the you know I mean I shouldn't say one of the better runs this year because the season just started, but um, one of the best runs I've seen for a long time. So 
congratulations to the Cardinals there. Uh, in case they loses their uh, 26-13 in that game. Um, this year, I've, I've actually talked to a couple of friends there. We're actually thinking about going to a couple of college football games. I know in the past, I used to go to um, KU games, which I know people are, you're probably laughing. KU football games? Like KU has a football team? Yes, they do have a football team. And yes, do they suck? Yes, they do. <laughs> But uh, one of the games I went to, actually I've been to two or three games. I have the, the last time I went to two of the games there, they've won. And it was a big, pretty good win for them. So uh, this year I'm hoping to do that. I'm hoping to go to um, some college football games. Like I said, if I had the money, uh, there probably would have been an episode of, uh, of this uh, soapbox here. Uh, this week, I probably would have been in Lincoln, and I would have just, uh, yeah, I would, I probably would have had a some kind of some kind of something for us, maybe a special episode. Where we talk about a couple topics and whatnot, because I I have been promising, I've been saying that I was going to try to get my buddy Steve on the show here, uh, but yeah, um, we, eventually that will come up to come up sometime here. Um, I'm actually trying, I'm trying to get something together here. Um, maybe possibly get to, him and I are going to probably get together here in a few weeks here, and, and maybe then we can try getting him on the show here, uh, talk about some sports uh, issues and some things going on in sports. So, uh, but yeah, just to finish off, uh, I'm not going to get into too many of the games because right now, like I said, it is um, yeah, it's a little after, a little before ten here now, and. Uh, so a lot of the games have not started yet officially, uh, but when this video does get up, it, you know there'll be a, there's gonna be a, a, a whole shitload of games going on. Um, a lot of the late games are gonna be on there on TV when this is up. So, uh, but some of the games you guys can look forward to. Uh, you got Texas Notre Dame. Um, you got LSU versus uh, Wisconsin in Lambeau Field. They're gonna be playing in Lambeau Field, and then uh, the big game of the night. Number 20, USC versus number one, Alabama. So uh, that is uh, your college football look there. Um, next week we'll have some, we'll try, I think we'll also have a segment here. We'll have some like stone cold lock picks or whatever for the week uh, for football uh, for a lot of NFL games. I believe on th Thursday night, uh, the first game is, it is the uh, Colt. Or no, it's not the Colts. It's the uh, uh, Panthers versus the um, I think it's Panthers Broncos a rematch from last year's Super Bowl. So uh, that'll be next week, um, week one on uh, Thursday night there. So uh, NFL, it's coming up around the corner here. So uh, everybody get ready to enjoy it. All right, now let's get to our final topics of the of the show here as always we finish off with some pro wrestling news so as we go to the squared circle here let's talk about what's going on in the wwe and in pro wrestling itself all right so uh this past week uh if you don't know already uh wwe superstar alberto del rio has said he is leaving the wwe again now, if you remember from about, a, I think it was last week or a week before that, I talked about that uh, he's going to be on, uh, he was put on 30 days suspension because of his alleged, uh, of course, he failed a um, wellness test with the WWE, uh, which found he had traces of um, a illegal substance in his, in his body, uh, which put him on suspension. Uh, not to mention... Um, you know, his, of course, his girlfriend, real life girlfriend, uh, Paige, uh, was also, uh, suspended for, um, and, uh, we're assuming the same thing for a wellness, uh, policy, uh, but it was, un it was undisclosed of why she was put on suspension, but she was put on suspension for 30 days. Well, now Del Rio says he is leaving because of, of creative issues. Apparently Del Rio, when he made his return back in October, uh, which have been be a year ago here next month. 
Um, he was promised by WWE officials, and especially from uh, Vince McMahon himself, saying that he was going to be involved in a lot more main event matches. Uh, you know, he's going to have more title opportunities. And apparently that has not happened for Del Rio, and Del Rio is very upset about it. So he's decided that he's going to break ties with WWE, and he at her request, he requested for his release, and he was uh, given so. Um, and uh, so, yeah, he's going to be no longer with the WWE. Yeah, and, and of course, you know, a lot of people are asking, been wondering why he hasn't been on TV. Well, besides what was going on backstage, it was also because of his suspension for the wellness test. Uh, so, yeah, it's kind of weird because now Del Rio won't, he'll be in this year's game. Um, if you remember back in 2015 when they, uh, when, uh, or when, uh, when WWE 2K15 came out, he was, actually, no, it was, uh, what, what am I trying to think? Yeah, it was early, was it early 16 when he left or something like that? Whatever, late 15, early 16, but when uh, WWE 16 or 15 came out, um, people, he ate whatever, he was on the game. People were wondering if he was going to be on 16. Well, then it turned out he wasn't. They put him in the game. Um, they went ahead and, and, and replaced him out of the game. Well, now he's going to be in this year's game. Uh, so, and, you know, there's already talks of him uh, going back to Ring of Honor. There's already been mention of that. And there's sources saying that there's a good chance, a very good chance, that we could see him on Thursday nights. We could see him on um, Impact Wrestling. So they're in TNA. So, um, you know, Del Rio got, you know, yeah. to me, I think he already had this already planned out, uh, to be honest. I think he already had some of this planned out. And um, if it, you know, he, I kind of think if he realized that it didn't work out, that he had an extra strategy, um, and as far as I know, he's he's been immediately released, uh, so he can go join um, TNA or Ring of Honor whenever, and be on TV within. Um, you know, he doesn't have to have that. You know, thirty days or sixty days or ninety days. Um, you know, uh, not being on television, he can just go straight to um, another company and, and be a part of the roster, right? as soon as possible so uh but we'll see we'll see where he's gonna be at and best wishes to him now unfortunately that means that uh him and uh page won't see each other as much as they would normally would but there is now even a story about page possibly uh being well page not being told but being more demanded to uh break up with Del Rio. Uh, there's sources saying, or close sources close to WWE says that Paige uh, could be at some point, um, or at least been told by WWE officials that she needs to uh, break up with uh, Del Rio uh, if she wants to keep her job. And to be honest, people, that is so wrong. You could not sit there and tell people, dictate people and tell people, well, you can only date this individual. Um, you know, because if that's the case, then I mean, go back to a couple about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, where uh, you know, uh, Brom from TNA uh, was in an engagement with Ric Flair's daughter Charlotte. Uh, now to me, that is a conference of interest because you got two people, you know, working at the you know rival companies you got a wwe employee dating a you know tna employee yeah it could be trading secrets you know <laughs> i mean yeah even though at the time she was in nxt but still i mean that i you know but yeah you, you know you go with that but um but that's what the at least the rumors going on right saying right now a lot of people are thinking too that she could possibly leave uh, because uh, there's been rumors saying that Paige was un she's been unhappy of the way her character and uh, her I should say her character and whatnot has been uh, placed on uh, WWE programming. Um, she really feels like she was actually she she says she's in a couple of interviews said she was being promised uh, opportunities to be uh, part of the you know one of the uh, figureheads for the new Divas Revolution. 
especially with the new brand brand split going on, uh, being one of the big time names in the uh, divas or in the women's division there on Raw. So yeah, we'll have to see how that goes here uh, in a few weeks. Um, but yeah, uh, I believe both. I believe both of their suspensions, both Del Rio. Well, of course, Del Rio's gone now, but. I believe Paige's suspension should be coming up here pretty soon. Uh, I think I think she may have another week or two left before she can come back to um, WWE TV. So, um, also I want to say too, there was a just announced that WWE uh, will have a random live event uh, airing live on the WWE Network. Um, I believe it's in the month of October. I think there's going to be more news about it. I think they kind of mentioned it. I, th- I haven't watched SmackDown yet, so I'm not for sure, but I've heard this. It's already been a rumor online uh, that it will be a live event, uh, a WWE live event broadcast live on a Saturday night. I think it's a Saturday before, I think, the Clash of Champions pay-per-view, which is, I believe, a SmackDown exclusive. Um... And it's going to be Brock Lesnar going against Randy Orton. It's going to be a rematch. So uh, check out WWE.com about that. Um, They are going to whatever wrestling sources you go to for your wrestling news uh, and look that up. I'll try to see if I can find a link on that here uh, where I read that at. Uh, But that is coming up here. I think uh, Clash of Champions, I think it's an October pay-per-view. Uh, I believe it's Clash of Champions for SmackDown, and I think Raw gets uh, Hell in a Cell. So, all right. Um, oh, let's go ahead and go to uh, some more news here. Uh, last week on SmackDown, did you guys see what happened there on the show? Uh, this one I did watch, it, and it was a very interesting promo. Uh, it was the Miz uh, pro having this amazing promo. On Daniel Bryan, and uh, it, it was a bit of a controversy on the internet for a while. There, uh, people were saying, "Oh, Miz, why are you saying that about Daniel Bryan? You know his situation. You know why he can't wrestle anymore." Um, and Daniel Bryan got so upset to the point where he walked off uh, the, the set. Um, and people say that he was very upset and angry. Uh, he made a um, he even acknowledged it, I think, on this past episode of uh, SmackDown. Um, but yeah, the Miz and uh, Miz had had this really great promo. It was a great work, uh, and a lot of people are saying that you know this is an angle for uh, Daniel Bryan making his return. And I, you know, honestly, I mean, it, it would in a perfect world that'd be awesome for him to come back. Uh, maybe that, you know, they this whole, you know, Dan Bryan being injured or whatever, it's just a storyline um, that he's not really hurt. Uh, as far as I know, I think, I believe he is, you know, he is legitimately hurt. He's legitimately retired. Um, but a lot of people are saying, oh, you know, he's going to come back. He's going to, you know, face the Miz. That does this guy re, re, you know, reboot his career and all this. And I'm thinking like, eh, I don't know. He legitimately has, you know, he's had several I mean, numerous amounts of head trauma, um, especially when it comes to concussions, uh, for many years in his career. And, you know, that's something WWE does not play around lightly about. Because, um, you know, Edge, of course, he has neck injuries there and, and whatnot, and they had him go. And I believe they did the same thing uh, with Christian, because Christian had the same issues as Dan Bryan. Not the necessarily the neck injury that he had to get re- surgery repaired, but the, it was the concussions um, that happened. That's why you don't see Christian on um, on TV anymore. So, um, but yeah, I mean, we'll have to see. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be more to this story, uh, this angle, this whatever they're doing with the Miz here, uh, as weeks uh, more weeks come up. Uh, finally, we got uh, Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens, the new WWE Universal Champion, as he got help from the return of the game. Triple H helped him out Monday night to become the second ever WWE uh, Universal Champion. Of course, the title being held by Finn Balor. 
there he won at SummerSlam, and then turn around the next night he had to relinquish the title and give the title up, and it put uh, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins. Uh, and I believe uh, Big Cass and Kevin Owens in this matchup on a fatal four-way. And in the end, Triple H came out of nowhere, beat the hell out of Roman Reigns because, of course, Roman Reigns and Triple H still have beef with one another after their big match there at, at WrestleMania this past year. And so that's going to start a storyline between those two. Um and and then turn around you when right when you thought I'm like oh crap you know Triple H is gonna be he's out here to help out Seth he's gonna help Seth be the man again he turned his back on Seth he turned around pedigreed Seth and have Kevin Owens pick up the win and now I guess now Triple now Triple H has a new guy his guy is now Kevin Owens so Kevin Owens is the new Triple H guy. And could we see the return of the authority? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> uh, Triple H likes having that power. He is still, you know, he, if you remember, he is still uh, COO of the company. Um, so we could see a power struggle between him, Stephanie, and, and even Mick Foley. I could see Mick Foley not liking the way Triple H and uh, Stephanie are running things and yeah, might have an issue there. So, um, but yeah, uh, Kevin Owens, your new WWE Universal Champion, and uh, Triple H making his return back on Raw this past week. So uh, that was really that. That was just like, m- like eye popping. Like wow, like WWE has actually got something going on. I mean, they've kind of been kind of just stagnant there, especially on Raw, um, ever since after you know the the. Uh, draft and a lot of people are saying hey you know they need something they need to spice it up some uh, because usa has been saying that hey the numbers are down the you know you guys promised us a, a better product um the numbers the rating wise are not going up and i don't know if i don't haven't seen the numbers officially for this particular episode of raw but um by the sounds of it, people were like it's been a lot of buzz on the internet so um, should be should be a very interesting week uh, or a very interesting Monday Night Raw there uh, for Labor Day there this Monday. All right, so that is it for this week, uh, you guys here on the show. Or her, hell, we're about to get to the hour and a half mark here at this point. Uh, but those are the, some of the stories and some things that have been going on this week. Like I said, um, you know, uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to the. Uh, to Dwayne Wade's uh, cousin and her family. And uh, we hope the, that they can find out who... I'm hoping that the police can solve this mystery, find out who committed this murder, and bring the justice. Um, hopefully Colin Kaepernick will have a better week here uh, as we get ready for week four of uh, preseason. Um, or, or we're in week four, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One of the two. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, people uh, can get their uh, heads out of their asses and <laughs> be a little more kinder and understand uh, what Kaepernick's trying to do here. You know, he's not trying to be anti American. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> Got done a lot of dumbass people in this country. Unfortunately, you can't ship those people off to to jail because you know the jails are already overflowed for dumbasses already in there doing actual crimes and crimes of being a dumbass yeah I just yeah there's not I wish there was a pill for it but there's not so <laughs> but anyway uh, if you guys enjoy the podcast uh, you guys can uh, uh, always hit that like button also uh, if you're new to the channel subscribe for more uh, sports gaming um, or sports gamer po- uh, talk podcast uh, for more information uh, or for more videos and whatnot. There's always links down below to the stories I talk about. You guys can check those out. If you guys, if there's an issue or something going on in sports uh, that you guys want to talk about, and it doesn't have to be necessarily just general sports, it could be actually video games. You can talk 
Uh, if there's something going on in the video game world that I don't know about, uh, that are making issues, uh, like when it comes to YouTube or anything like that, yeah, YouTube, yeah, I, I'm going to talk about you because there, there's been some issues with you guys. Um, <laughs> and watch this video be, <laughs> it won't be able to be seen. Well, I, I can see it now. But anyway, uh, if there's anything you guys want to talk about uh, here on the channel, you want me to discuss, and we can have a good, healthy conversation, a debate about it, let me know down below in the uh, comment section and uh, send me some feedback there. And I will definitely do the research and um, talk about it. Um, so that is it for this week for Sports Gamer Talk Podcast. Um, yeah, that's where I should say Sports Gamer Soapbox Talk Podcast. Um, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. Links down below in the description. Uh, and again, hit that like button if you enjoy the video. Uh, if you're new to the channel and want more, of uh, the, the podcast hit that subscription button or if you want to follow other series here on the channel hit that subscription button and check out what we have here on the channel so thank you guys so much for watching as always keep yourselves you know, healthy and i will see you guys next time